A while back, I had made a video of this thing that you see in front of you. This is actually a F200 China Pride endoscope or barscope. You can see the specs. The reason why I'm making this video is because the original video I had shot using my camera glasses and I didn't realize at the time that the actual lens for the camera glasses is up higher than what I would really anticipate it being. So you couldn't really see anything on the video. So we're going to just take another look at this and the box, which they expertly put the shipping label on top of, which is brilliant. But I mean, there's not really much to see. This is what the unit itself looks like. In all of its glossy glory that will attract fingerprints in like half a nanosecond. Lift this up. Uh, this is a stand for the borescope. A little screen anyway. Here's the USB cable for charging. Comes with all of these accessories. Uh, it looks like there's a mirror, there's some hook things for this. You know, things that'll make it easier to do what, what you need to do with it. Of course, being that it is what it is, it's not meant for you know, quote unquote personal use or anything like that. But here, of course, is the 10 meter long cable that it comes with. And this is a rigid cable. So it's not like loose or anything. You can see it kind of retains its shape. And the last thing that's in the, uh, the box is the F200 user manual. Complete with English, of course. So the unit itself, I think this still actually has a charge. See, right now I don't actually have it plugged in. On the side here, I can get this out. That, or I'm sorry, this whole thing comes out. That is where the actual camera plugs in. It's just a regular USB connection. There's the charge plug there. And there is the SD card slot. Right now it's got a 32 gigabyte cheapo card installed. Go ahead and take a look at the menu here. It's playback mode. Change all the settings. Yeah, you can see the information, but the SD card. You can see it does support, it looks like it supports 4x3, so that's kind of neat. We can leave it at 1080p. There's your firmware version. I'm not sure if this actually has flashable firmware or not. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the, uh, the actual camera. So here you can see the camera itself. Okay, take two. I guess my Canon HF200 camera is broken permanently. What a piece of junk. Where I left off, I was trying to show off the uh, worst scope. I guess if we put something under it, that's not going to work. You can kind of see the picture. I'm trying to get right side up, and is really not wanting to go right side up. You can see that it's got a little glitchiness every once in a while, and that is because... I think mine's got a broken cable. I think the uh, the cable on my camera head is a little broken. It's got a light on the end of it. You might be able to see here. 
we can adjust, I believe. Now, that wasn't what I had in mind. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Oh, I know how to do this. It's on the actual camera body itself. You can see there's a little thing there that we can use to adjust the brightness of the LED. Pretty much infinitely variable, which is fairly nice. But uh, there you can see that is the unit itself. Like I was saying, picture quality wise, it's really not too bad, I guess. You know, for being a cheap Chinese little device. It's just kind of too bad that this particular example has got a slightly broken cable. Otherwise, this would be probably kind of neat to experiment with. I really don't have a whole lot of use for it. I really kind of just bought it because it's cheap. So, I mean, oh well. I think what I will do is I will try and take some more... Uh, test video with it and uh, see where we end up. Okay, let's take a look at playback on this. It's not an album mode, I'm not really sure what that is. I guess that's for pictures. So you can see there I just took a sample picture. You can, like I said, you can kind of get an idea for the kind of detail that this thing can take. I'll go ahead and I will include these at the end of the video. But you can see also that the date and time is not set correctly. I'm not sure if this thing has got a real-time clock that runs while it's powered off or not. But uh, it's not uh, September 15th anymore. Go to video playback. We can find a video. Like, I don't know, this one right here. This is trying to get a look inside the uh, air return in here, which I don't know if I actually went into the air return or if I went into uh, something else. Because the air return is not really set up all that well in this house. And that just takes us back out to video mode. But like I said, the quality is really not that bad for being a cheap Chinese thing that it is. It's just too bad that the uh, the connection I think you could tell in this video the connection really doesn't work very well. I'm not sure if there is a broken ca uh, broken thing in my uh, my cable or not. I'm also not sure if this would work with any old USB So this is an attempt to, uh... Yeah, there's the light. So, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and include these clips, and uh, then I will be back to wrap this up.
that's pretty much it for this little F200 bore scope. It's not very professional, but I mean, professional endoscopes or bore scopes go for, you know, a couple hundred bucks. This was only maybe about 60. So, you get what you pay for. For what it is, I guess it's not that bad. If only I had a real use for it. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then. You know, it took me until now to realize that that little picture that it displays as a splash is supposed to be a picture of the camera end of the borescope. At least I noticed it. <laughs>